Hey everybody, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net and I'm here with another hardware guide today. Today we are going to look at cable management practices and tips. This guide is meant more for the intermediate builder and some of the beginning builders. Keep in mind that we do skip a couple of the steps because we're assuming that you have an intermediate level knowledge of PC building. But on that note, we will talk about cable management practices and what you can do to properly manage your cables, which uh, we'll talk about why that's helpful in just a second here. So check the full guide on the site, I want to say first of all. Check the full guide on the website for more detail on each of these tips and for more custom support. Nick from uh, a former Antac representative is now writing for us and he wrote the guide so huge props to him for doing that. Your objective with cable management is pretty simple. You want to create the cleanest internal computing environment that ensures your system will operate at peak efficiency. Loose or jumbled cables in general will decrease your airflow and they will increase the amount of preventative maintenance you have to do in terms of dust management and system cleanouts. So you definitely want to decrease that workload and make sure your parts will not be damaged by any dust and not be damaged by hampered airflow. So uh, cable management in the, t in the long run definitely saves you time and it helps increase the lifespan of your components. It's also conducive to showing off your system which of course is always the most important factor in a gaming build. You want to show off those parts and not look like a fool who just spent a lot of money and didn't spend the time to properly clean the case. So let's talk about how you can actually do that. The build order itself, there are a million different ways you can build a system. Many of you already know how to build a system, but the order I personally prefer to do when I'm uh, building with cable management in mind is I like to start with the power supply and then actually move to the drives. A lot of people will do the motherboard pretty early, but I do the power supply just because it's huge and uh, has the most potential to damage something if it's not mounted properly. So I like to get that in there early and I move to the drives because some cases um, just uh, it's easier to put the drives in before the motherboard because you're not fighting with other internals if you just put them in first and they're not in the way if they're in there first. So then I move to the motherboard after the drives with the CPU, heatsink, and RAM all pre-installed outside of the case because I normally test them before installing them in the case then I manage all the cables and then I move to the video card and finalize cable management. The video card is last because I know that some cases will not allow the 8 or 4 pin 12 volt connector that plugs in near the CPU to pass through the back of the case so you normally have to pass it under the, the video card if that is the case in your case. Uh, also keep electrostatic discharge compliance in mind when you're building if you have more questions on ESD, comment below or post on our forums for in-depth support. Be very careful. You want an ESD wrist strap to ensure you're not zapping any components. And uh, don't stick anything in your case that is not ESD compliant because it can permanently damage components. So keep that in mind when using things like tape because some tape will hold the charge depending on what you're using. Uh, once everything's installed, it's time to start managing cables though. So let's talk about the basic principles of cable management. There are a few key principles of cable management that you want to keep in mind throughout the entire process. First, your main goal is to elongate the cables to maximize their travel distance to the target. This actually helps stretch out the cables and it prevents the cable bulge on the backside that will of, of the motherboard tray that is, which will uh, obviously prevent you from closing the case or cause dents or other problems. Uh, next, it's time to it's well actually it's just very important in general to keep future expansions in mind determine if there's anything you're planning to upgrade in the near future uh, if there is leave that component somewhat unfinished so that you can more easily modify it when that time comes and while you're at it make sure there are no major fan ports being obstructed by the excess cables tools for the job uh, there are few tools that I recommend for managing cables most effectively. A modular power supply of course is very nice to have and will make your case more free of clutter as you'll be able to remove excess cables that aren't getting used. Uh, you'll also want twist ties and zip ties and all the ties uh, to hold cables down and tie them to each other. Before we start routing cables, check if your case will support routing an 8 pin or 4 pin 12 volt connector. Uh, that's the one that plugs in near your CPU through the back of the case. If your cable isn't long enough, you can get an extender for it. And if the motherboard doesn't have enough room to support that cable head to, to fit through 
in the top, then you'll have to resort to routing it under the video card instead, which is fine, don't sweat it, just, uh, just keep that in mind, and pass it under your video card before you plug the video card in. Um, it's time to start actually moving cables now though, so let's start with the fat 24 pin connector since it's the most obvious. Untangle everything and shove it through the bottom pass through or grounded hole, then push it through these, push through all these SATA power connectors and if relevant the 12 volt connector. Um, before plugging these in though we do want to deal with the case's tiny connectors remember how I said that I like to keep the small things under the big things well we're gonna find those small things in the form of front panel connectors the USB connector HD audio uh, LEDs power switches all that stuff relevant cables that are routed from the front send them through the back if possible either push them between the drive bays and the motherboard wall or find a grounded hole for them some cases will have them pre-routed through the back, um, so take advantage of that if you can. Once they're in place, stretch them out along the wall of the motherboard tray, and then pull them back into the case through the pass-through that is closest to their destinations. Repeat this process until all front panel connectors are in place, and then plug them in, of course. Next, grab your SATA power connectors and route them to your drives, preferably your uh, hard drives and SSDs should be facing the right side of the case in newer models, which makes it much easier to conceal the connectors and easier to swap out in general if you want to change things later. Uh, once the power is in, do the same for the data cables, the actual SATA 3 or SATA 2 cables. Pass those all through and plug them in to their respective ports. Try to keep everything as, uh, as tight on the motherboard as possible. You don't want a lot of cables showing on the inside. Plug the 12 volt 8 uh, the 12 volt 8 pin or 4 pin connector into the motherboard if there's a pass through for it. Otherwise, hold it until the video just before the video card is in, and uh, plug that in right before you plug the video card in. And then, of course, make sure the cable fits under the card. Plug the 24 pin connector into the board, and um, do this just by passing it through the back first, and then pull it back through the hole nearest its destination. Just try to hide it as much as humanly possible. You basically only want the connector and an inch or two of wire to be, or wire shielding to be showing on the inside of the case, just because it is fat and pretty noticeable. So, uh, with all of those in, finish connecting the 12 volt connector if you haven't yet, mount the video card, pass its PCIe connectors through the bottom pass through, then pull them through the one nearest the GPU and connect them, and finally, uh, connect any stray cables or fan cables that we've missed anything from other expansion cards or from drives or from front panels or whatever anything hanging around that you don't like this is the time to reroute it and begin using your zip ties twist ties and other means to hold cables down to ensure they don't move around on you don't commit to zip ties until you've confirmed that you're happy with the cable routing though because it is a huge pain in the butt to cut those ties and retie them over and over and of course you run out of them eventually so do keep that in mind and be careful not to scratch the case when you're cutting that's pretty much it though you should be all done at this point let us know down below if you have any questions at all or register on our forums for more in-depth and one-on-one -on -one support we help everyone for free so check out the forums if you like this video please like it subscribe to our channel for more gaming hardware and gaming videos and of course just like, comment, and subscribe. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you need help. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.